You're listening to the Seafront Afternoon Show. Here again is guest host, Kathy Morris. Okay, so we're on to something completely different. You know, as as you know, we at Seafront are really at the cutting edge of all stories. And yesterday we were doing this uh, story on recreational property, and my question was, have I missed the boat? He, me looking for the uh, cabin, the elusive cabin, and I want to know if I've, if I've missed the boat. So we had this discussion, just a brief one yesterday, about uh, recreational property and what was available. And lo and behold, in today's Sun newspaper front page, it says if you want re waterfront recreational property in BC, it's going to cost you a million bucks. Oh! Oh, so we tracked down Rudy Nielsen, and he's from uh, the Naiho Land and Cattle Company. They're developers of recreational land, and uh, we had to track him down because he's in this article. So welcome to Seafun, Rudy. Was I right? Have I missed the boat? Uh, sort of, Kathy, but, you know, you got the basic facts, but there is some uh, variables to that. Well, you know, I the discussion sort of centered around the fact that I was trying to find this this kind of rustic cabin, and and in this article it says, uh, you know, if you want anything that isn't rustic, you're you're looking at a million bucks. I think what you got to look at is uh, the person's pocketbook and driving time. I look at everything coming from Vancouver, Calgary, to Edmonton, and it's a driving time. You got two hours, four hours, six hours, and ten hours. So. If you want to drive two hours, put you up in the merit, and there you got to buy a lot, one acre on the lake, four hundred and fifty thousand dollars. Put up a house, you're into a million dollars for a recreational cabin. It's a very limited market; very few people can afford that. But if you want to drive ten hours and you want to go to Prince George on a real nice lake called Lucas Lake, we just sold out an entire subdivision, seventy-two lots, uh, one acre lots on the water for forty-five thousand dollars each. So. So, Rudy, what is then, what's rustic? Because I, when I think of a cabin or when I think of recreational property, I don't think of a house, like building a house. Well, Kathy, when I was young, rustic to me was a tarp and a can of beans. <laughs> <laughs> that was rustic. And as I, as I got a little older, I got into having a roof, you know, that doesn't leak and uh, worked my way up. Now my cabin, I have a cabin up on uh, on, on a ranch I have, yeah. and that rustic, I still have to have the moss chinking, I have to have the logs, I have to have the fire in place, because when I sit around with my family, my sons and my grandchildren, around that fire, fire, it's like meditation, and I have my log cabin in the background. I could never put a wood frame cabin there or a fancy place. I have to have this log cabin. I can take a bowie knife and I can throw it and stick it in the wall, and I'm not worried about leaving a hole in the wall. That's the kind of what I call a rustic cabin. Rudy, Rudy, it's funny, actually, you're talking about being around the fire with your children and your grandchildren and then followed by throwing a bowie knife and hitting the wall. I do know what you mean, though. I do. It's rustic, and, and if you... If something hits the wall, it doesn't matter. But I think that's, when I think of recreational property, I certainly don't think of gyp rock, you know, and uh, and uh, molding around the floor. And it seems to me that when people are talking recreational property now, they're talking about like a second house. Well, well you, got, you define what recreational cottages are. That was the article, what it was all about. And they were saying $1 million, that's in Vernon on the water. Right. I mean, that is not to me a uh, recreational cottage. A recreational cottage is in the 100 mile area, you know, Green Lake, in through those lakes there. And it's a, it's a cabin where you can get a prefab, you know, you can get a quick lock home, uh, a little log cabin. You can, everybody's building them now. And that to me is still a rustic cabin. Even though it's new, you can make it look rustic. It can have about five, six years. You know, it gets really rustic. Now, buying these old cabins, uh, they are still available, and they are fairly cheap up in that area compared to, say, the two-hour drive from Vancouver. But to me, rustic is still logs, uh, you know, a roof, uh, smoke coming out of the chimney. And that's still, to me, a rustic cabin and not uh, a place in Vernon or Kelowna. That's right. So people who, who want, don't, aren't real campers, and, like, for me, the camping is... Um a three-star hotel. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. But I, I have always wanted a cabin. But I'm like you. I want. I don't want to have a second home. So now I hear you say that it's all depends on how far you are from Vancouver. 
Yeah, so Vancouver, thanks. Calgary, or Edmonton, because the oil money at 72 bucks a barrel has really brought in the Calgary and people. You know, they bought uh, you know a couple. Of, uh, they bought about a billion and a half dollars worth of real estate in British Columbia last year. Right, and, and people you know, from Alberta. But, yeah, from Alberta, but yeah. still the big market. 94 percent of our properties are are still lower mainland people buying recreational land, and it's all again on your pocketbook and your driving time. You know, I was in I was in looking at a development in log cabins in Colorado where some of the uh, very rich stay. And a log cabin to them uh, for a weekend getaway, they come every two months, is 34,000 square feet uh, in yeah. a neighborhood of $15 million. That's their idea of a log cabin, they come in with a Learjet. Yeah, okay, well, well we're, know, we're not there. But well, uh, I, I looked on, on in the article and it said um, if you wanted to go to eastern Canada, you could get the sort of rustic cabin on the water, like in, in Prince Edward Island or Newfoundland, was $85,000. So prices uh, definitely, I was at the east, are definitely a lot cheaper in the east, even in, uh, you know, lakes country, around cottage country in Ontario. There are a lot more lakes available, a lot more cottage cabins available than there is in British Columbia. Okay, so, so Rudy, could you tell me, if I, if I, they have actually a cabin fever section in your article, and, and if I describe to you what I'd like to find in you can tell me whether it's possible, just whether it's possible. Fire away. And it's the same thing as probably 95% of the world wants. Yeah, on the water, mature trees and privacy, a dock with a bathroom, and with a, a kitchen and a structure that is at least sound and might have the possibility of, you know, putting a solar panel on the roof or something. Is that is that going to be possible? What's your traveling time? Well, I think, uh, I would say I would not want to travel more than six hours. Okay. Five then or six hours. Then you're, then you're in about the 350000 to about $650,000 price range. So, now, it, oh, it just kills me because, you know, we all, yeah, thank you. We all should have done that uh, 20 years ago. So these, when we talk about what, what you're discussing or describing, those are standalone units on property, not a condo. Right, not that's in right. a subdivision. No, that's a, what we call, uh, you know, the, uh, that's, a, that's a, a, a lot on the lake with a, with a cabin on it. Uh, it could be new or it could be old or it could be renovated. What about if people wanted to buy something in, uh, like, several families together? Would you recommend that? Yes, I would. Um, I think that if um, if you want if you see that ideal cabin and say it's uh, in the nine hundred thousand dollar price range, I would suggest that you bring in some family members or even friends. And before you make the final deal, you have an agreement that everybody understands and everybody signs, and that's your agreement. And buy it as a joint venture. Okay. So, last question before we because we're going to go to a break, but I just wondered if you had. Um, any thoughts on the ski versus the summer? Like, there seems to be two types of, I'm a summer vacation person, the cabin on the lake is, I'm visioning summer. But if you were a skier, is it any cheaper? Well, depending on the skier, if it's a cross-country skier, you know, then you can use your cabin on the lake for wintertime and summertime. That means you have to insulate the cabin, put in proper heating, and put in proper septic and sewer systems. Oh, yeah, which, I hadn't thought which, of that. You know, which is a little more expensive, but it's still quite possible. Now, with all the toys out there and uh, and uh, with all the clothing you can buy nowadays, winters aren't really that bad anymore in British Columbia, as long as you don't get up too far in northern British Columbia. But if you get up to that 100-mile area, it's very, you know, it's very nice in summertime. One thing, the sun always shines, you know, I mean, yeah. it's a, a nice sunny day just about every day. And, uh, you know, around 10 above is not bad for cross-country skiing, you know, so no, that's, that's still, true. you can use it for summer and winter. Okay, so that, uh, thanks, Rudy. I, I really appreciate you coming on and, and updating us on the recreational property. I, I do think I've missed the boat, and um, I really thought I would be able to do this. I'm going to have to inherit it or something, because a million dollars for a waterfront cabin. But, as Rudy Nielsen said, it is a matter of travel time, and that's a very good point. It's how close you want to be to a major center. You can still get reasonably priced property if you want to drive. So, I guess it's not a weekend property, maybe a month in the summer. But uh, we had to have that update because we were just so far ahead of our time on CFUN, and there it was on the front page of the Vancouver Sun. Good news. You're listening to CFUN, 1410 AM.